Good morning, Internet fans. Ryan Perry here, Simple Biz Support. Today is Wednesday, April 6th. Therefore, it is Social Media Wednesday. And as usual, I have Sarah Giametti with Pervaro Marketing. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, the sun is definitely shining today. It's supposed to hit, uh, I think, over 90 degrees in Sonoma County. I so know. pretty excited about that. It's even going to be 90 he out here. Uh, like that, That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then it's supposed to rain over the weekend. And I have a friend who's a photographer that posted about ah Mother Nature because she has her senior, her high school senior photo shoots this weekend. So, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Thank you, Mother Nature. It's going to put course. a camera on. Not thing. yet. The ninety degree beautiful blue skies is on a Wednesday. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, today, since it is Social Media Wednesday, we are going to talk social media, specifically Twitter. And yes. this is going to be a, a great show for people who are interested in improving their visibility, credibility on Twitter. It is. So we're going to give you three tips to yeah improve your tweets so that you improve your visibility and, and engagement. And with the ultimate goal of improving your business through Twitter. All right, perfect. And I'm assuming we're just gonna plug in some automated software that takes care of all of it so I don't have to worry about it. Nope, nope. nope. You can automate some of it, but not all of it. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with scheduling out some of, some of your tweets, even kind of most of your tweets, but you still have to have a system behind it. And the first tip, sorry, I'm gonna look at my notes. Uh, the first tip is to tweet without links occasionally. So don't always, don't have every single one of your tweets be a link. I'm sometimes guilty of it because I'm like, oh, great article, great article. Uh, they show that, the research shows that tweets without links, they do engage, they get better engagement. I swear, I feel like I haven't had my coffee this morning yet. They Tweets without links get better engagement. And the more that you tweet without links, and you, you up your trust factor with your followers and they start to know, like, and trust you and like the content you're putting out. When you do put out a link, because you're doing it kind of sparingly, then you, you probably get a better engagement and click-through rate on those tweets because it's not the only thing that you've been putting out there. Yeah, and I think a lot of it just has to do with credibility. There's so many people on Twitter that are just pushing, pushing, pushing content, and that's really not what the goal of uh, Twitter is. And so by incorporating a link in every single post, and I know I'm guilty of that just because there's so much content out there that, that is great to share. And Mr. Wonderful, thank you for joining the show again this week. Um, having that link content there all the time for the people that are just uh, scanning, link, 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 link. Oh, you're selling, selling, selling. So you know, I'm just gonna ignore you versus actual engagement. And I know for me, one of the things that I thought of were uh, different questions I could ask people, and it's really based on my target market. I, I have a lot of business people, typically male, who are technology. So I like to ask, ask questions about technology. What's your favorite browser? Um, you know, do you use a DSLR? And then, you know, I've also, I haven't done it yet, but I thought about doing like a 20 questions. And, you know, going, all right, let's play 20 questions. I'll go first. What's your favorite color? Or, you know, something like right. that to engage, you know, to do engagement. And for me in my industry, I always have a hard time because it's business people I'm trying to attract, not consumers. So I need to be professional, yet relatable, yet personable. Right. But and you want to have a professional a fun factor in there because that's part of doing business. You do business with people you like. And if you don't like them, you don't continue to do business with them. And like, you know, the, the business that we're in, we want long-term relationships. And so it's how do we attract people that we want to do business with, have a little bit of that fun in there, but still be professional and show like, yeah, no, I know what I'm doing. Uh, and that is a tricky business, especially when you're a service business owner. Um, it's a little harder to implement the fun while still being professional. But the, having the questions out there, the questions, quotes, tips, that don't have links associated with them. You're just, it kind of, it gives that giving feeling. You're giving information versus a link, especially if you're using some automated software and you're using URL shorteners for tracking. They don't know if it's your link or not. They have no idea. You know, they'll, they might be able to see the, the at, 
the handle of the God. I cannot think today. Uh, giving credit. Hopefully, to hopefully you're sharing. You're saying hopefully you're sharing who you got the information from. Yes. Yeah, you're giving recognition to who you got the article from so that they can kind of decipher that the link is not yours. But right. they ultimately don't know that because you're using URL shortener. They can't read the URL and connect it to your username. So not including the links occasionally or fairly often, really, um, build helps build that trust factor and have you look like you're just giving. Here's a tip. Here's some help for you. And eventually, if you need my help, you'll come back to me. Yeah, and I think we kind of just threw in a bonus tip there, which is if you are going to share somebody else's content, especially if you have enough room, sometimes it gets too long, uh, throw their Twitter handle in there. Uh, I do that, Forbes, Success Magazine. I do it with everybody, but you know, especially if I'm, again, my target audience, business people. So Forbes, Success Magazine, uh, John Asaroff, there's a couple other people that are not social media related or strictly uh, my business related, but it, it's relevant to entrepreneurs. Right. Yep. So, right, so that was tip number one. Tip, tip number one. two. Tip number two is using the right hashtags. So you don't want to overdo it, and but you definitely need hashtags because it's one of the biggest pieces of content that people search by on Twitter to find what they're looking for. So that could be difficult. You might not, you might think you have a great hashtag and nobody knows what it is and nobody's using it. So uh, hashtagify is a great way to identify what could be really good hashtags for you. So you can put in the one hashtag you thought of and they kind of mind map out the, the relevant other relevant hashtags that you can use. And you can, you want to use a couple in Twitter. You don't want to, you don't, you only have 140 characters. All right. Did they change that? I can never keep up. Um, but you, you only want to use a couple. You don't want to be hashtag nuts because it's hard to read. All right. Save uh, that then, for Instagram. Yeah. And even then you don't want to use a million of them. Uh, but that's another, that's, that's another episode. Um, then you can take the hashtags that you identify and hashtagify and go over to right tag and see the popularity. Is it, is it popular or is it overused that maybe you don't want to use it because people aren't wanting to search for it or you won't get any recognition because, you'll just be buried in the millions and millions of tweets that are already using it. Yeah, and so, just to clarify, just to clarify, uh, hashtagify.me, correct? Yeah. So that's a website and then righttag.com. So those are two different websites that um, you use for hashtag research, but they're two different tools. One is actually what are the different key or uh, hashtags that are being searched that are popular? And then right tag will let you know how popular that is if it's being overused yeah. or underused. Yep. Yeah, hashtag if I will help you identify which ones you might want to use. And right tag identifies the popularity of it and the over usage of it. So if it's too, if it's overused, that you, maybe you don't want to use it. Pick something that's a little less, a little less popular. Right. Okay, perfect. Um, and that takes a little time and effort and you're, it's, it's not something you're able to automate, but just like you would do keyword research for creating content uh, for your website, when creating your website, you want to do the same type of research and make sure that you're targeting the right people that's relevant to your product or service. Right. And you don't have to do it every time you go to do tweets. You, you can do it once every, once a month. I mean, Things data changes, so you do want to do it relatively frequent, but it's probably a good guess that what you're using will still be relevant a month from now for a for a hashtag. So you don't have to do it often, but at least once a month, once every couple of months, just check in and see because there might be new ones that you're missing out on that have that have popped up in popularity right. and relevancy. You know, and I'm gonna test our little blab thingy here. Go ahead and keep talking. I'm gonna drop right tag in. I forget. Um, we tested this offline, but I forget what it would do if I drop a link in here. Uh, oh, doesn't like it. All right. All right. No words. Uh, so the third tip is timing of your tweets. So Twitter moves at the faster than the speed of light, it feels like. And so you do need to tweet often. And but also finding out when your followers are online to see if you need to adjust your tweets and your scheduling. So uh, there's, a, it's again, another tool, Tweeriad, T-W, like tweet, but period, um, T-W-E-R-I-O-D, Tweeriad.com. 
is a tool that you can sign in. They'll look at your tweets. They'll look at your followers' tweets. They'll analyze it and come up with optimal times for you to post on Twitter. So this way you can see, you know, if for some reason the optimal time is 11 o'clock at night and you never tweet at 11 o'clock at night, maybe you should because followers are tweeting at 11 o'clock at night, which means they're on their you're more likely to get engagement from them because they're there, they're active. So you definitely want, this is one that's easy to use and you, it's just knowing your numbers everywhere else. We talked about it on Facebook, looking at your analytics, seeing what's the best time of day, every day to post based on your followers. Because all of this is to engage with your followers. And if you're not engaging with them, you're not on there at the same time they are, then it's almost impossible for you to engage if you don't pay attention to that. And so that's a really easy one to implement and adjust your tweet schedule. Yeah, and I think with that, there's two things. One is that people want consistency. There's a reason why we do the show every Wednesday at 9.45 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's so people know, oh, okay, they're gonna come back. There's gonna be more information. So same thing on Twitter. Uh, you have to post on a regular basis, which is pretty much daily if you want people to um, like, trust, and follow you, essentially. And then number two, I think, is that you need to tweet throughout the day. So I really get frustrated when people are like, oh, I got to tweet 15 times. So they knock out 15 messages at one time, and they're like, boom, I'm done. It doesn't work that way. You got to spread it out throughout the day. Um, so number three, if we're going to use Twiriad, to figure out when we when the most optimal time is to tweet, my recommendation is to, as you're collecting your content for the day, is put your best content in those peak hours. Because if you're doing 15 to 30 tweets a day, which I believe is the rough estimate, obviously it varies depending on industry, um, the reality is you're not gonna be able to find 15 to 30 pieces of great quality content seven days a week, 365 days a year, it's just impossible. So uh, finding the right time to post your best content so you get maximized value out of it is very powerful. And I use Post Planner to post my content out. And then throughout the day when I find something, when I'm in Twitter, I'll automatically retweet something uh, or I might just drop it in. But as far as making sure that I have my content as I'm having breakfast, I go ahead and I'm eating breakfast and I get my, I'm about 15 posts a day is what I do. Yeah. Uh, and that's I know you use, you use something else. Uh, I use post planner and bundle post bundle post uh, combined. Okay. Uh, Cause bundle post allows me to have some just standard text only con content in there. Uh, so I can mix that in with, with links. What it doesn't have right now is the picture aspect of it. So, um, and that, but that's where you, the scheduling tool, making sure you're consistent, that's where the scheduling tool is handy, but you don't want to put everything in schedule and then never come back to it because if people respond to it, engage, you need to be paying attention to it and engaging. Uh, and then, yeah. And then you post, you can post on the fly, but at least the scheduling tool keeps you consistent in case you have a really busy day and you just can't get around to it, but don't rely on it a hundred percent. Please don't. Right. Right. It will. It, it'll negatively affect your success eventually if you if that's all you did. Right. All right. Perfect. Uh, we got about less than a minute left. Uh, quick highlight of the three tips for today regarding Twitter. So number one, tweet without links. Sometimes don't always use links in every single one of your tweets. Number two, use the right hashtag. So utilize the tools hashtagify and right tag to figure out what are the optimal uh, hashtags for you to use. And the third one is utilize a tool like Twiriad to find out when your audience is online and when the best time is for you to put out your best content. All right, perfect. Uh, with that, that is today's show. As always, you know, part of the goal of the show is to give you, the business owner, some information that you can use uh, today in your marketing. So if you find this overwhelming, you know, all these different websites, check them out and maybe you just start using one. And if you can incorporate just one aspect of something that we've taught today, then your marketing is going to be that much better. And I always think of marketing as, as layers. And if we can add just a little bit, uh, another layer of marketing, you're going to get better results. And that will allow you to add another layer and so on and so forth. So even if you take just one of these tips, and I know number one, 
I got to incorporate that better. Um, it's going to make you a better marketer on Twitter. So with that, Sarah, as always, I appreciate your time. And I will see you next week, same computer, same screen, with some uh, more great social media information. Thanks, Ryan. It's always a pleasure. All right, everybody. That is it for today's show. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Take care.